I've officially had the worst barbecue week of my life. Backstory. Over my course of getting into the barbecue scene, I have amassed minimal problems on my journey. Now, with that being said, over the past week, I've been very happy to talk about my journey, prior weeks and months, I've been very happy to talk about my journey and how the equipment I purchased has not failed me. I put it through rigorous um, sessions, running hot, running hot, dumping, running hot, cooking. So as I was being very complimentary of the Green Mountain Grill brand prior days before last week and not having any severe issues with the brand, I get something to happen to my GMG. Apparently it went golfing. That air code says PGA. That air code does not allow my controller to turn on, turn pellets, or do anything. So basically, I have a non-usable smoker. But wait, there's more. In that same process, we got booked for one of the biggest caterings we've ever done. We still had Unicron ready to go. Loaded up with 16 pork butts. Got it churning. I feel like I'm connected to my equipment at times. I feel like, as with my vehicles, they are part of an extension of me. And sometimes as we get out of the way of some of our devices, they start going haywire. So if you remember a couple days back, I posted a picture of 16 pork butts in the GM, I'm sorry, 16 pork butts in the Old Hickory CTORR. Yes, what I did not post was within that same process, there was a problem. The CTORR apparently has a weight limit. No, I wouldn't say that. The shelves became imbalanced due to as the pork was draining, caused the imbalance, flipped the shelves, and the rotisserie no longer turns. So, I'm down two units at one of the most important months of my life. What do I do? First thing we do is remain calm. Knocked out the catering yesterday, a little bit of stress, a lot bit of stress actually, but we got it taken care of regardless. Today as I wake up, I'm here to assess all of my issues and talk about them and talk about what I found. So with the GMG, talk to them early in the week, parts on the way. Terrible thing about that, one to two week delay on the warranty parts. I cannot afford to be down one or two weeks. More to talk about on that decision. When I looked a little closer into the cooker, after taking off the panel to make sure there was nothing on the inside, let me go back. Shouts out to Mr. Myers of uh, Shouts out to Mr. Myers of Myers Barbecue Pit and Repair for a great insight. Um, we talked about it when I first got this CTO. He was like, this is the last of a dying breed. If it breaks, you're gonna have to convert it. So I felt like it was broken, called him. We talked, he instructed me some terrible things. Parts on back order. Conversion kits are on back order. Nothing can be done until the middle of November. I cannot afford for that to happen right now. So, this morning again, we're up, we're looking at it, and we're looking to see what we could find out. So, opened it up, took out some of the shelves, hit our button to spin our gears, it spins. But one thing I did notice, here in the corner, there's a planetary gear, that's what I like to call it, could be the wrong name for it, but it turns on the gear. The bottom gear is the motor, the top is the rotisserie. So they, the, bottom, the bottom gear is on the motor that turns the gear, and the top, you know, just like a mechanical wheel in a factory or some shit. So what I'm noticing is the top is coming up and not staying grounded when there's weight put on the racks. It's like, I know that's not, that's not supposed to be happening, so I wonder what it was. So got into a little bit more light. Noticed there was, looked like, what looked like a pinhole on the wall. So it's like, hmm, wonder if that could be a screw. So felt back there, felt like there was a screw then all the bells and whistles start to go off. Put on a glove, I stuck my hand down here in the bottom and I will show you what I retrieved. Pulled out a few items out of the bottom of the drip pan and I found something. Set it in some degreaser, some super clean degreaser and boom. What we have is the answer to our problems. So from what it looks like, this sits in the channel along the side 
of that gear. Sits down on top of that bar and locks in with a screw. How do I know it locks in with a screw? That's not the screw. We have our screw, which looks like it's sheared off because of pressure. So, two things we found from this. Number one, the motor on that GMG is extremely goddamn strong if it broke this screw. This screw sits in this metal bracket and that is what keeps our rotisserie from jumping up and down when it gets too much pressure on it. But that poses us a new problem because it's the first time I put the screw in and this lets me know for a fact that screw is sheared off and that screw has to come out of that wall and that's going to be a process which I do not know but with me having to repair this unit and there are no available parts we're now going into the zone of becoming an old hickory repairman worst case scenario we fix it best case scenario we have to convert it and we have to wait till next month also have to establish what this party is if I'm not mistaken this sits on and you can see where that's got a dent on it. This sits within, I think, that bracket to just kind of lock it into the channel. More on that, we'll find that out. But with that being said, calling all my machinists, man. If you know somebody in the area who I may be able to lean on, give me a call. I got a job for you. We can work together. We can make some great content out of it and you can help a guy get back on top. With that being said, this is Eddie Wright. We're down, but we're not out. And we're going to show you guys how to get back. Stay tuned for more.